So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and in this video I'm gonna be building a farmhouse dining room table. I constructed it using pallets, two by fours, and two by threes for the most part. I also made it so it has an extension leaf on each side of the table. So with both extension pieces on the table, it will seat a total of 10 people. When you take those out, it still seats six. Now halfway through this project, I decided to do the top with epoxy resin, and this would be my first time trying it. And man, did I realize there's a learning curve to doing epoxy resin. So this is gonna be video number one, and we're gonna go over the main construction of the table, and then video number two, I'll be doing the staining, the epoxy resin, and the final finish on it. So let's get to it. So I laid my pallet material out on a table to get an idea what it was gonna look like. Then since I was gonna run this stuff through a planer, I had to make sure all the nails were removed out of the pallet material. Using a screwdriver and a pry bar and a punch and a hammer, I did that. I had bought this Wen planer specifically for this project and I actually had really good luck with it. I started out by just playing with a couple pieces and then once I found that it was gonna work well, I ran multiple pieces through at a time at the same height and since it was pallet material, I found that running it through one side and then flipping it over and running it through the other side at the same height would cut off a little bit more material depending on the warpage of that piece of pallet material. This actually took quite a bit of time to do with the planer, but we did not have any issues with the performance of it. Once we had them all planed down to pretty close to the same height, we set them back on the table and began trimming them to fit on the table. I had to run through some of them through the table saw to get them to the same width, depending on what row they were going to be in. And then I trimmed the edges on the miter saw, just took a little bit off to make sure it was square. Then I would lay them back on the table and mark the final cut. This process took quite a bit of time, but it was fun to do, trying to figure out what looked good where and where the seams would be, because we made sure we never had two seams in the same location in rows that were right next to each other. I did have to take a sander to a couple of them, depending on how crooked the boards were, so they would cut good on the table saw, because at this point I do not have a joiner. So once we had it all laid out on the table, we took it all apart and put a piece of plywood underneath it and set it back in place. We ended up deciding to put a couple pieces of pallet material going the opposite way as the rest of the table on the ends. Once we made sure the plywood was the right size for the pallet material, we pulled all the material off one more time, cleaned the piece of plywood off, and began to glue and tack nail the pallet material onto the piece of plywood. We made sure to keep the rows intact. You can see them there laying on the ground on the right hand side, so it would make it very easy to put them back on in the order they came off. So we were going for the rustic look with this table. So I tack nailed through the pallet material into the plywood. However, if you did not want the extra indentions, you could go from the plywood side into the pallet material. I wanted the extra character of the extra indentions from the nails going in. Sometimes I would put two nails in and then take a block of wood and a hammer and tighten the planks up to the next row before throwing the rest of the tack nails in. We continued this process and got the rest of the rows in place on the table using the hammer and the piece of wood on the final row to make sure that it was nice and straight. Once we got that completely done, I set the table on the ground, put another table on top of it for a flat surface and added some weight to it to let it sit overnight. So that's how I completed the tabletop. Now let's talk about the extension slides and the legs. So I flipped the tabletop over. I wanted to make sure my screws weren't gonna to be too long and I used two by threes for the sides and the underneath slides. Right here I'm just pre-drilling the holes so I can anchor it. Then using some glue and some screws I anchored that one into place. Once getting that anchored I went ahead and sanded down the underside of the plywood. So I had a smooth surface for the extensions to slide in and out. So each one of these extension slides took four two by threes one for an outer rail, one for an inner rail, and then two slides on each side. Once getting all eight two by threes cut to length, 
I ran the four that were going to be sliding in and out for the extension through the planer on all sides to smooth it out again to make it slide nicer. I ended up using 2x4s for the side edges of the table. I anchored the 2x4s to the outer rail using countersunk screws. I made my legs out of 2x4s as well. Right here, this is the upper support of the leg which is going to screw into the inner and outer rails of the table and also act as a lower guide support for the extension slides. So my original plan was to anchor the outer trim of the table directly to the slides. However, that didn't end up working out too well and I cut out a piece of 2x2 two two and anchored it to the extension slide and then I could anchor the outer trim to the 2x2 two two. and that ended up working out pretty well. Right here I'm just pre-drilling it so I can screw it to the rail slides. I ended up using a liquid nail as an adhesive for this part of this project because the wood glue would have just dripped off before I was able to get the screws into the rail slides and I wanted to anchor those while they were in place so I made sure that it was in the right position. I used two screws in each slide. I also did a 45 degree cut on the ends of all the rails that were sliding in and out to help guide them into the cross members. So besides using the legs as the lower support for the rail slides, I decided to add two more cross members on each side. I just used one by twos for this part of this project. I couldn't get this one in by hand, so I used my spreader clamp to spread the trim out a little bit so I could get it into position. I anchored each of those cross members into the inner and outer guide rails. This is one mistake I made. I should have put all the cross members in and tried the slides before putting the end caps on because they ended up being way too tight. I had to disassemble them, take them to the planer again, and then put them back together. Once I got both extensions sliding good in the rails, I anchored the side trim to the extensions. I pre-drilled the extension with it out put it back in, grabbed the 2x4, clamped the 2x4 to the tabletop so I made sure it was lined up correctly, then screwed the trim into the extension piece. So I had a small gap on one of the extension slides when it was butted up to the table. So I took a circular saw and ran a straight edge and trimmed it to take up for that gap. And then it fit nice and tight. So once again, we used 2x4s to make the legs Right here is just the main base. I took these pieces to the miter saw and put an angle on them and then sanded them down a little bit to soften the edges. I screwed and glued the four small pieces of 2x4 to the two longer ones from the bottom so you would not see the screw heads. So the uprights of my legs are going to be three 2x4s wide. So I've got three little scrap pieces and I'm just measuring to make sure I am centered. Once I verified center, I marked where that three stack of 2x4s was and then marked them individually so when I pre-drill my holes I could make sure I was dead center in each 2x4. So then I took two small pieces of 2x4, pre-drilled them and anchored them to one of my uprights. Then I screwed and glued that piece to the bottom part of my leg assembly. Once I got that anchored in place I stood it up so I could anchor my cross braces between the two legs. I pre-drilled and screwed and glued those cross braces as well. I left a couple inches out on each side and tapered the ends to give it the look I wanted. Then I cut a piece of 2x4 to fit between the two cross braces, nailed that in place and then made the other upright and glued and nailed that in place as well. Then I got the upper part of the leg assembly that I made for a cross member underneath the table and anchored it to the upright assembly making sure I was centered and glued and screwed it into place. For some additional strength and I like the way it looked I added some 45 degree gussets to the top and bottom. Those I just glued and nailed into place. So that's going to wrap it up for video number one. In the next video we'll be going over the stain and the epoxy resin that I put on this table. For my first time trying it, it did not go well at all. I had done some research, but not nearly enough. We're going to go over all the mistakes I made, along with how I repaired those mistakes that I made. I'm also going to go over how I would have done things differently to prevent the mistakes that happened during this process.
As always, I try and give the most information in the least amount of time as possible so as to not waste your time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already and hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.